All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Still rounding my way back into health, but yeah, I'm back to talk a little bit of the Mavericks game against the Charlotte Hornets. And man, oh man, this was a very back and forth game. Excuse me for a sec. Been eating a lot of cough drops today. Um, this was a very back and forth game for the Mavericks. They were down in the first half, very slow offensive start. They were down 20 in the first half. And they kind of climbed their way out of it a little bit towards the actual halftime itself. But the offense just was not there. I mean, Luka was sitting at one point with like 14 of the 28 points. Uh, and not a lot was really going for the team. Now, they end up taking control in the third quarter. And actually control most of the second half. But the, the common theme now that is emerging with this team they cannot seem to close out these close games. And while we can say, hey, that's coaching, it is in part, we also have to keep focus on the players as well. Luka in the clutch this year has not been anything like his sensational rookie season. All of those iconic moments, the .6 seconds shot uh, in Portland that forced overtime, his 11 straight points against Houston, those were these just huge moments where it was like Luca's Luca's world that everyone else was just living in. He still makes some plays, but he also made some bad decisions. He had a couple turnovers at the end of regulation. Dallas was up like 12 points with three minutes to go, I think. I mean, they were largely in control. They were up, I think, 96-84. They were right there, and yet they let it slip away. The, the Hornets go on a late push again, just like a clap back from the Oklahoma City game. You have, you have the opposing team go on a late run that Dallas seems unable to match. And you have Luka then again forcing some tough shots. He was looking for an alley-oop at one point, one of his turnovers I mentioned earlier, that I didn't feel like that was the moment to throw an alley-oop. Like, unless it's wide open... That didn't seem like the play to make to me. And it seemed, I don't want to say it this way, but it kind of felt like he was hunting the triple-double. He does get his 10th triple-double of the season, which is a Mavericks franchise record for a single season. You know, that that's a nice accolade, but, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to drag him over the coals too much because he did have 39, 12, and 10 in a game in which the offense, again, was weak. And I know that we are missing two of our three best players. We still ended up scoring 120 points despite by a very subpar, really, first quarter and a half. I mean, Dallas, let me see here. Dallas, with 430 left in the first half, had 31 points. That's how bad things were offensively for this team at that point. At that point, it was 41-39. Like I said, the lead grew to 20, but then in the second half, Dallas took control. And it's it's just a continuation with this team right now. I know you're struggling because you don't have Tim Hardaway Jr. and you don't have KP. The good news is, at least with KP's case, we knew he was going to miss this game. It sounds like he'll return next week. Whether that means he'll be back for the Chicago game on Monday, I don't know. But he will be back next week. So that's good. That's a very good sign. The team has just been cautious with the emergence of his knee soreness. It's not an actual critical thing. But this team's got to figure some things out. You know, they get a, a, a very good game out of Maxi Kleba. Kleba, 24 points. I believe that's a season high for him. So if I'm wrong on that, someone feel free to correct me. Hit a lot of big shots. I really wanted to list him second, but Dodo had himself a, a quality game as well, 15 and 8. And, you know, Berea, nearly a double double off the bench, 11 and 9. Dallas just has to figure it out. They're not getting enough from some of these other parts. And when you're missing two of your three main guys in terms of your scores, you absolutely cannot afford not to get multiple guys stepping up. And they just didn't get quite enough of it tonight. Even then, really, they should have won this game. This is a game that shouldn't have gone to overtime. Dallas now falls to 0-3 on the season in overtime. All three games and losses occurring at home. This team, what are they now? 10 and 8 at home? I believe so. I believe they're 10 and 8 at home following beating Brooklyn, the game I wasn't able to cover the other night as I was 
really knocked out with the flu, and uh, now this loss. So I think they're ten and eight at home on the season. That's not good, man. We got four more of these games at home in a row. We need better than that. Charlotte is Charlotte's. They're not a bad team. They're not like. Let me take a look here. Charlotte is. They're currently ninth in the East. They are 15 and 23 right now, um, and 17 and a half games back of the Bucks. Now, make of that what you will, but uh, they they pretty much owned you. Graham, 27 and 13. As for Terry Rozier, scary Terry, 29 points, eight assists, six rebounds. Washington, 19 points. Like they were, they were cooking. And Dallas just was not doing enough defensively. Whether guys were out of position, whether they looked confused, whether they just failed to rebound. Like, that's something I want to touch on here. So, Dallas gave up nearly 50% shooting from the field. 49% for Charlotte compared to 47 for Dallas. Um, Dallas got a lot more shots, but they also... Dallas took 50 three-pointers in this game. Made 15 of 50. They missed their first 10. I know that. And for a long time, they were sitting on three. Second half got going. Uh, meanwhile, for for the Hornets, half of that in terms of attempts. On threes, they shot 11 of 25. Vastly more efficient, 44%. They got to the line a hell of a lot more than Dallas. Now, you can say part of that came towards the end of overtime when Dallas is fouling to put them on the line and they keep playing layup other end, try and hope they miss. Charlotte as a team is shooting 74% at the line this year, uh, which is definitely on the lower end. So statistically, it wasn't a bad strategy. It just didn't pay out because you put Graham and Rozier there. And, you know, Rozier, I think, is 76%, they said, and Graham's like 83 So you weren't really in a great spot in that regard. But even still, 28 of 31 for Charlotte at the line. Again, that's 90% at the line on 31 attempts as a team for the season, they're shooting about 74%. That's an anomaly. Dallas, meanwhile, 11 of 13 for 85%. Turnovers. Dallas won that battle pretty comfortably. 17 for Charlotte, 10 for Dallas. Dallas had more assists by one, 28 to 27. Uh, Dallas got whipped on the boards. Offensively, it was about even. 16 for Charlotte and 14 for Dallas. But overall, 53 for Charlotte, 41 for Dallas. They got whooped. On the boards. I mean, there was one possession by itself where Charlotte got like six offensive rebounds. Now, it did end up in a charge, an offensive foul. So Dallas held on to it, but still. Uh, Charlotte wins in blocks, 5-4. Dallas wins in steals, 7-5. Fouls are actually about even, but yet Charlotte shoots a million more, a million more free throws. And this is a game where Charlotte felt like the more aggressive team. Dallas was just especially in the first half, man, just hoisting threes left and right and left and right. If if you're if you're going to live by the three, you're going to die by the three. There are going to be games that just isn't happening. And even if you have Luka come in and drop nearly a 40-point triple-double, okay, that's great. He shot 14 of 32 from the field, so less than 50%. 5 of 15 from three. Don't worry, he's going to keep shooting step-back threes in big situations. And unlike last year when he hit those big shots in the clutch, they're not dropping this year. He's not had an end-of-game, you know, dagger like that this season. He's been phenomenal. He's he's an MVP candidate. He's lacking those defining moments that he littered his rookie year with, especially in the first half of the season. It is what it is. Um... Luke ends up a minus five for the game, five turnovers, two. He gets two steals, six of six to the line. Now, Luca is, I think, fourth in the league in terms of free throw attempts per game at about 9.4 a game. He gets there six times tonight. I felt like he just wasn't he wasn't being aggressive enough. He wasn't getting to the basket. He wasn't he was settling a lot. And you know, Charlotte's a good defensive team from what I can see, but it, it's frustrating to watch. Excuse me, tingle in my throat. Uh, it's frustrating to watch because you see how we let them dictate the game. We're a team that loves to shoot threes, but they weren't falling tonight. They 
you know, just kept baiting us enough to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And then at the end, it just came down to they kept fighting and they kept attacking the basket. They kept doing that, kicking out for the wide open three. And meanwhile, we're forcing tougher shots. And it came back to bite us. So let's see here. I wanted to have a couple other things I wanted to call out here. Uh, Off topic, this is the today marks the 20 year anniversary of Mark Cuban buying the Dallas Mavericks. Not the best way to celebrate it, but they did highlight him uh, on the big screen before the game, and the crowd gave him a standing ovation. He got a little choked up. Billionaire is going to billionaire. It is what it is. Um, before the game as well, I don't I, I don't know that this plays into anything in the game, but before the game you had Rick Carlisle talking about the way teams defend Luka, and this is from Tim McMahon on Twitter. Uh, quote, they're beating the shit out of him. He's handling it well, but teams are taking liberties with him. End quote. Tim McMahon says, he says it's happening more frequently as the season goes along despite constant communications with the ref. Quote, it isn't right. End quote. I can take a couple things away from that. I can take away that I do see teams being physical with him. I do think it's on an uptick. And there is some truth to it that it's not being called. I also think that there's... The fact that even though Luca has tried to tone it down a little bit lately, uh, he he developed a reputation, like it or not, as someone that kind of winds to the refs too much. Because of that, I think that refs are kind of letting stuff slide a little bit. Now, you know, there are some guys that are going to do it and do it, and they'll get away with it for the most part, i.e. a James Harden. Uh, but in Luca's case, I, he doesn't have quite that clout yet in the league. You know, when Harden started getting away with that constantly was in Houston, like year two in Houston. Now, he he flopped a lot in OKC, don't get me wrong, but he didn't start getting just ridiculous calls until he had already established himself a little bit. He had already been in the league several years in doing that. Luka, because he's such a phenomenon so fast, I don't think he's earned that degree of clout or respect. I think there are some maybe in terms of uh, maybe not something they would even willingly admit. Some people who look at it and say he hasn't done enough to pay his dues yet. And as a result, and that mixed with him kind of, uh, you know, objecting and protesting non-calls and things like that as much as he has, we're going to kind of swallow the whistle a little bit every now and then. That's just pure speculation. But that is kind of the impression that I get sometimes watching the Mavericks lately because, yeah, teams are getting physical with him. And it nearly bit Dallas at the end of regulation. Again, like he had a critical turnover in about the final minute 15. It's going the other way. Now Dodo ends up blocking it off the backboard. In fact, it, I think it should have been called a goaltending. Dallas got away with one there. But it was nearly two points going the other direction. That would have been catastrophic. And... You know, Dallas dodges that particular bullet, even though the next one would get him. But it's still just something that you, you got to figure it out, man. Like, Luca, Luca's got to figure out how to close out these games. Because in a night like this, he either has to make absolute magic happen or he has to, at the very least, get to the line. Because the step back's just not there for him right now. Uh, let's see here. Trying to see if I had any other notes I wanted to call out. Uh, This had the Mavericks held on and won. This would have been their biggest comeback victory of the season. Previously, they were down 16 to New Orleans in the second game of the season. This was 20. And uh, they went up 12 with like three minutes left in the fourth quarter. They just couldn't close it out. So it is what it is, man. Uh, They're struggling right now. They are on the struggle bus part of that. I understand it because of who you're missing and how vital they are to your team, but that doesn't excuse it. Just because I understand why it's happening doesn't mean that it's acceptable that it's happening. So Dallas has to figure something out because, you know, they got four more games on this homestand, and I don't even know if we're still currently fifth in the West. Let me check this here. Are we still fifth in the West? No. No. That's not accurate there. With this loss, we drop to sixth now behind the Jazz, one ahead of the Thunder. Hey, the Thunder is still sitting in seventh, but you know what? They won again. They've won five straight. 
The Thunder are two games back of you at this point for the for the seven seed. They'll jump you and become the six. You'll fall to seven. And uh, the Blazers, they're a little bit sitting back there too. They're at the eight seed right now at 15 and 21. So you got about six and a half games on them. But still, point being, this is a fall. Dallas was sitting at, what, third? or No, they were sitting at fourth when uh, all this happened. We've dropped two spots now. The top of the West, really outside of the Lakers, uh, it gets pretty pretty close. You got the Nuggets and Rockets both sitting at 24 and 11. Clippers at 25 and 12, even though I swear it seems like every other day I'm turning on the TV and seeing them with a loss. But Dallas has lost at this point, what, three of its last four? I mean, we're struggling. This team's got to figure some things out. And uh, I don't have an exact answer for that other than to say, once KP gets here, you got to get everything you can out of him. You got to hope that he's ready to go because this team really, really needs some added production. Let me see here. I want to take a look at this. So the Mavericks, let's see, one, two, yeah, lost three of their last four and uh, four of their last nine. It's not going to do it, guys. Not going to do it. But uh, not a whole lot else to say on this game, man. Like, it's it's still just one loss. We're still, you know, not even halfway into the season quite yet. We're 22 and 13 at this point. Sixth in the Western Conference, not fifth. But this is yet another game that it hurts to lose it because you had it right there. All you had to do was close the damn door. Close the damn door. And they couldn't do it. That's where uh, that's where you need to be a little more iron-willed and a little bit more hard-nosed. Get to the basket. Attack the basket. Be relentless. Don't settle for just kickouts, let alone step-back threes. But that's going to do it for my time, guys. My voice is trying to crap out on me even as we speak. Uh, thank you for listening. Don't forget to like this video. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.